Okay, we're going to solve these problems, and we're going to solve this by using the equal basis property. So equal basis, uh, I talked about that in the previous video, and I also talked about the laws of exponents. Uh, so we're going to use some of those ideas here. Equal basis property basically says that if you have two numbers that have the same base, then you're allowed to set the two exponents equal, and we're going to use that in order to solve problems like these. For this one, I have a 4 here, and I have 64. What we would like to do is we need to get both of these to be the same base. So first we'll start out with the number that, that's already here already of 4. If I can write that 64 as a power of 4, then I want to go ahead and do that to solve this one. Now if I can't write uh, that as a power of 4, then may I need to break it down further and maybe do like a 2 instead. So write both of them as a power of 2. But this one, 64, you are allowed to, you are able to write that as a power of 4. So on this side, I have 4 to the x minus 2. And on the other side, the 64, I'm going to change that to 4 cubed. That will be 4 times 4 times 4 would give you 64. So now I have both the bases are now the same, which means that equal basis property says I'm now able to set the exponents equal. So I have x minus 2 is going to equal 3. So what I do is I just add 2 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 5. That would solve this particular equation, that's the x value that would make this equation correct. So we use equal bases right here, fours were the same. Since they're already equal, we just went ahead and set the exponents equal down here and got our answer. For the next one, for this one I have a 2 and I have a 4. Now these can both be written as bases of 2. This one, the 2 is down below, below the division bar. If I take the 2 and I move it above, move it to top, move it across the division bar, that's going to make it a negative exponent. That's what I want to do here, and the reason why is because I want to actually create that base of 2, and then I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side. The 4 can be written as uh, 2 squared. So now I have, the, I have the bases are both going to be 2's. So now I need to use the uh, laws of exponents in order to solve this one. I have a power raised to another power. When you have that happening, you're going to multiply your exponents. Negative 1 times 1 gives you a negative 1. Negative 1 times x will give you a plus x. So you get negative 1 plus x. That's going to equal the other side. I have the bases are already equal already. I'm going to use equal bases property. The bases are the same. Now I'm going to set the exponents equal. Negative 1 plus x is going to equal 2. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And so I get uh, that x is equal to 3. So uh, by putting in a 3 here, that would uh, make this equation correct. So now I've solved both of them. Okay, for these problems, uh, the 27, we have 27 and 9. Now I can't write 27 as a power of 9. So because of that, this is a problem I need to break this down further. So for the 27 here, I'm going to change that into a base of 3, and I can also write 9 as a base of 3 as well. So both of these I'm going to turn into a base of 3. So to do that, I, have, I still have the exponent on the outside, I have my x plus 2. Instead of 27, I'm going to write that as a power. So I'm going to write that as 3 cubed. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side over here. I have uh, the... 9 is being raised to the 2x. Now instead of the 9, I want to write this as a base of 3 also. So this one I'm going to write as 3 squared. Each of these, I have a power being raised to another power, so I have to multiply my exponents. That's using the exponent rules that we talked about earlier. So for this one, the 3 will be multiplied by the x, and the 3 gets multiplied by the 2. So I get 3x plus 6 on that side. And the other one over here, I get 3 to the 4x. I have the bases are now equal. I'm going to take the exponents and set them equal to each other. So 3x plus 6 is going to equal 4x. Subtract 3x from both sides. I'll get 6 is equal to x. So that's going to make this equation correct now. That makes the equation balance. If I put 6 on this side and 6 on that side, I should get the same answer. Now I want to try uh, part D. Now this already has a base of 3. I want to write this one as a base of 3 as well. If you have a square root, a square root is the same thing as raising something to the power of one half. If this was a fourth power there, that means I would have a four down below here. One fourth or a cube, I would have a cube root would be one third power. 
So basically whatever number comes on the outside, that would go on the bottom of your fraction there. So that's three to the one half. On this side I have three to the four y minus one. Both the bases are now equal. I can set the exponents equal to each other. So four y minus one will equal one half. To solve this, uh, make it easier, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two so I can cancel out the fraction. So I would get eight y minus two. And then if I multiply this side by two, I'm gonna get a one there. I'm gonna add two to both sides. So I get eight y equals three. Divide both sides by eight, and I'll get y is equal to uh, 3 eighths. So, so yes, it's possible that you could have fraction answers on these as well. This would be the one that would make this equation correct. Okay, for parts E and F, this one, we notice that we have an, I have two different bases. So this is a little bit different than the ones that we did before. I don't have an E over here. Now the letter E uh, doesn't represent the, you know, this is, this is part E, but this E is definitely a different E. This E right here would be, basically it's a constant. It's equal to about 2.71. And that number is, we'll look at a little bit later when we start getting into logarithms and natural logs. That's, that number will come back a little bit later. But for right now, we have e raised to the 3x plus 5. So it's about 2.71 raised to that number equals 1, and we want to solve that. We need to get both of these to be the same base. So I have to get both sides to have an e in it. Okay, now the way I can do that, this side uh, is, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I have e to the 3x plus 5. This side, I also want to make, I want to have an e on that side as well. Now, in order for it to equal 1, we have to use one of our exponent properties we talked about before, and that particularly is that anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So to solve this, I'm going to change the, the 1 into e to the 0. e to the 0 is the same as, as 1. So because I have that, since I have the, the two bottom numbers are now equal, both of these are e's, the bases are equal, so now I can set the exponent equal. So now I'm just going to do 3x plus 5 will equal 0 because that's the exponent uh, from the right hand side. Solving that, I get 3x is equal to negative 5, divide both sides by 3, and I get negative 5 thirds. So negative 5 thirds would be the answer to uh, part e. Uh, so all the ones we've done so far have one solution, so you might be wondering, is it possible for me to get more than one answer for these? The answer is yes, and this example is going to show that. Uh, again, I want to make sure that both of them have the same base. I have a base of 2 here, the 8, I can write that as a power of 2 as well. So this one I have 2 to the x, x plus 2. This side I'm going to change it to 2 to the third power. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. I'm writing out I'm leaving it as a 2, so that way both the bases are going to be the same. You raise a power to another power. Whenever you have that, you're multiplying the exponents. So I have, a, I have this raised to that one, so I have x squared plus 2x. That's going to equal 3 on this side over there. And so basically I multiply these out. I'm setting it equal to that one. The bases are the same, so I set the exponents equal to their, again, equal basis property. You need to get this equal to zero. You don't want to factor this and set both of them equal to three. That's the wrong way of doing it. You want to bring this over and set it equal to zero because you have a quadratic. So for quadratics here, I have x and x. I have one and three here. You want to get a positive two in the middle. So we're going to do a, a plus three and we have to do a minus one over here and we're going to set that equal to zero. Setting them both individually equal to zero, you're going to get x is equal to one and you're also going to get that x is equal to negative 3. So yes, it is possible that you could have two answers for this. Both of them, if you check both of them, they should both give you uh, an answer of 8 when you put that in.